everybody. My name is Bernd Gag, leading the design services at Texas Instruments Germany. As already promised in our first session, we will discuss now on a boost power stage, means a step-up converter. Stepping up a voltage can't be done by a linear regulator. We are forced to use a boost converter. And efficiency is also quite good. Doubling a voltage will end up roughly in an efficiency 95-96%. Now let's have a look inside the boost power stages and have a look at the voltages and currents. As we learned in our first session, at the input of every DC-DC converter there must be a low impedance source, followed up by an inductor, our switch, our FET versus ground, a rectifier, and an output capacitor. That's basically all we need to build up a boost converter and to step up a voltage. But how does this work? Very simple. At first the on state. The switch will be closed to ground. We force a current across the inductor. That's our on state. If we switch off the MOSFET, the inductor forces the current across the diode and closes the loop. But how we can stop a voltage? Very simple. That's the main understanding of the boost converter. At the on state, the voltage across the inductor is like this. But at the moment, due to inductance law, when we open the switch, the voltage inside the inductor turns. And that is the basic principle to understand the function of the boost converter. At the off stage, the voltage at the inductor is added to the input voltage. Now look, let's have a look at the waveforms. Very easy. Of course, when switch is closed, during our on state, the voltage at the switch node is zero. Causing a voltage across the inductor by opening the switch the voltage inside the inductor turns. And that's the basic understanding how the boost converter works. The voltage inside the inductor has to turn. And now we are adding the inductor voltage to our input voltage. Means we are getting output voltage plus forward voltage at our switch node and again switch closes again voltage becomes zero switch opens output voltage at the switch node that's the main understanding what we can see here this will be roughly our input voltage. This will, this will be roughly our boosted output voltage. And the difference between output and input is our inductor voltage. And the currents, pretty the same, pretty close. What we can see inside the buck converter Voltage increases due to inductance law. By opening the switch, current decreases, and again, voltage increases, sorry, current increases, and current decreases. But there is a big difference compared to the buck 
power stage. Energy is only transferred to the output when the switch is open. So the DC current The DC output current consists only of the area of the current at the off state of our MOSFET. Results very easily, roughly like this. That's our DC output current. This area has to fit into this area. And the pulse width of the boost converter formula, very easy. The duty cycle, is the output voltage divided by the output voltage, but always we have to subtract here the input voltage. That's valid for the duty cycle of a continuous conduction mode boost converter. The bandwidth at the boost converter is pretty limited compared to the buck converter. We got here, inside a, continu a continuous conduction mode boost converter, the right half plane zero. But what is the right half plane zero? It's not just a formula, it's understanding. Energy inside our boost stage is transferred to the output during the off state. If we are now increasing our load to get more energy to the output, typically we need a longer off state. But in a fixed frequency system, this means we are decreasing our on state, and that is vice versa what we want to have. We want to have more energy at the inductor. That's the behavior of the right half plane zero. Typically, to sleep very well, we are putting our crossover frequency roughly to one-tenth of the right half plane zero. And if you need a better transient behavior, let's, well, let's place the crossover frequency to one-fifth of the right half plane zero. Efficiency inside our boost stage can also be increased by replacing this, the rectifier by a MOSFET the so-called synchronous rectifier that emulates the function of our Schottky diet. If you got more questions or you are more interested in the boost power stage, please link to our evaluation module at the end of the presentation. Our next session will be related to a buck boost converter and if there are any further questions, please visit our community. Thank you very much.